Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend, and we're actually getting kind of close to the end of the book. And today, I'm going to be talking about what led me to make some of the major life choices that I made quite a few years ago that have ramifications even today. Although I did not know what it meant, God said go, and go I went. That's my quote from quite a long time ago. Philippians 3 verse 14 says, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In my early 20s, life was pretty good for me. I went to a really on fire church. I was involved with a coffee house ministry on the weekend that was both a heck of a lot of fun and it was really rewarding as well. I had a really good job and I was on the upward track in that job where I was offered some in-house education that would have put me on the fast track for a lifelong career in that area. I had it made in the shade. However, there was a hunger or a restlessness in my heart. God was calling me and he was inviting me on a great adventure. I knew I, that I would never be satisfied unless I responded. And so after prayer and support and counsel and me figuring things out back and forth and back and forth, I made my decision. I resigned from my job. I stepped down from my coffee house ministry and I prepared myself to say farewell to my family and my friends and my comfort zone and off I went. I didn't know what the future would hold for me that crisp September morning as I took my first plane ride ever from Alberta to Ontario. My heart was full of ideals and lofty goals and all that kind of stuff. It would not be until years after that, though, I realized I was ushered into a new economy. In the eyes of the world, many of my friends and my family I was making a pretty rash decision, putting all my eggs in one basket, but I knew I had to do what God was calling me to do, and that might be a little bit difficult for some of you to understand. At one point in my journey, my health was compromised and my finances were depleted. I suffered great misunderstanding. I suffered prejudice and persecution, not from outside, but within the Christian organization that I was in. And I experienced loss as well. One day, the Lord asked me the same question he asked his disciples, and I could only respond the way that Peter did and that was a long time ago I answered that, and I still respond the same thing. John 6, verse 67 to 68, Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, I used to say that to God as a complaint, to be really honest I used to say, I burned all my bridges in order to follow what I felt you were telling me to do. Look at the mess that I'm in. You, you have got to clean it up. I have nowhere to go back to. Um, so my attitude wasn't exactly outstanding, but that was the truth. I had burned all of my bridges. I had nothing to go back to. Would I 
have boarded that plane so long ago if I know what I know now? Would I have boarded that plane knowing that I would be living on a small disability pension only 20 years after that flight? Would I have gotten on that plane knowing that I would suffer great loss, that I would have my heart broken through countless goodbyes, and I would bear the consequences of my own personal failures along the way? With no hesitation looking back, I would say yes. As a young 24-year-old, even if you had told me all of this, I probably would have still made the same decision. Yes, I was pretty naive, but I had that call of God in my life. James 1 verse 2 and 4, count it all joy when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Remember we talked about that. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Although I have little of any value in the eyes of the world, I know I have reaped unfathomable blessings, all dividends of my life investment. James 1 verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. If you're feeling a sense of dissatisfaction in your life right now, seek God's will. Seek out some wise counsel, not from your best friends forever, but from people who can give you an objective answer. God holds your future in his hands. He has been faithful to me, and I know he will be faithful to you. And I'm going to leave you with a quote by Irma Bombeck, who was a humorist who wrote in the 60s and the 70s. She didn't write a lot of stuff about God at all, so when I found this quote by her, I was kind of surprised, but it made sense to me because I could see little hints of what she was trying to do with her writing over the years. When I stand before God at the end of my life, I would hope that I would not have a single bit of talent left, and I could say I used everything you gave me.